Hello. Happy Saturday, everyone. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, classmates. I am tasked to report on RA7877, which is all about sexual harassment. So this Republic Act 7877 is an act declaring sexual harassment and unlawful in the, employ in the employment, education, or training environment and other for other purposes. So in section one, it is uh, the title is there. Uh, the act shall be known as Anti-Sexual Harassment Act of 1995. In section two, it's the declaration of policy. The state shall value the dignity of every individual enhance the development of its human resources, guarantee full respect for human rights, and uphold the dignity of workers, employees, applicants for employment, students, or those undergoing training, instructions, or, edu or education. Towards this end, all forms of sexual harassment in the employment, education, or training environment are hereby declared unlawful. So in section three, rick education or training related sexual harassment defined rick education or training related to sexual harassment is committed by an employer, employee, manager, supervisor, agent of the employer, teacher, instructor, professor, coach, trainer, or any other person who have who having authority, influence, or moral ascendancy over another in a work or training or education environment demands request or otherwise requires any sexual favor from other, regardless of whether the demand request requirement for submission is accepted by the object of the said act. So in a work-related employment environment, uh, sexual harassment is committed when the sexual favor is made as a condition in the hiring or in the em employment. So re-employment or continued employment of said individual could be possible or in granting, and said, uh, granting said individual favorable compensation, terms, conditions, promotions, or privileges, or the refuse, uh, refusal to grant the sexual favor results in limiting, segregating, or classifying the employee, which in any way would discriminate, deprive, or diminish employment opportunities, or otherwise adversely affect said employee. Second, the, se uh, the above uh, acts would impair the employee's rights and privileges under existing labors or the act, uh, the above acts would result in an intimidating, hostile, or hostile, or offensive in environment for the employee. In an education or training environment, sexual harassment is committed when against one who is under the care, custody, or supervision of the offender. Second, against one whose education, training, apprenticeship, or tutorship is entrusted to the offender. Third, when the sexual favor is made a condition to the giving of a passing grade, or granting honors and scholarship, or the payment of a stipend allowance, or other benefits, privileges, or considerations. And in number four, when the sexual advances result in an intimidating, hostile, or offensive environment for the student training or apprentice. So any person who directs or induces another to commit any act of sexual harassment is here indefined or who cooperates in the commission thereof by another without which it would not have been committed shall also be held liable under this act. So this conspires. In section four, uh, the, the duty of the employer or head office in work-related education or training environment, it shall be 
the duty of the employer or the head of the work-related educational or training environment or institution to prevent or deter the commission of acts of sexual harassment and to provide the procedures for the resolution, settlement, or prosecution of acts of sexual harassment. Towards this end, the employer or head of office shall first array promulgate appropriate rules and regulations in consultation with, with and jointly approved by the employees or students or trainees through their duly designated representatives prescribing the procedure for the investigation of sexual harassment cases and administrative sanctions therefore. So administrative sanctions shall not be a bar to prosecution in the proper courts for unlawful acts of sexual harassment. The said rules of regulation is issued pursuant to this subject shall include, among others, guidelines on proper decorum in the workplace of an educational training institution. Larby create the committee on decorum and investigation of cases on sexual harassment. The, comma, uh, the committee shall conduct meetings as the case may be with officers and employees, teachers, instructors, professors, coaches, trainers, and students or trainers to increasing to increase understanding and prevent incidents of sexual harassment. It shall be conduct the it shall conduct the investigation of alleged cases constituting sexual harassment. In the case of work-related environment, the committee shall compose of at least one representative of each from the management, the union, if any, the employees from the supervisor rank, and from the rank of special employee. In the case of educational or training institution, the committee shall be composed of at least one representative from the administration, the trainers, teachers, instructors, professors or coaches, and students or trainees as the case may be. The employer or head of office, educational or training institution shall disseminate or post a copy of this act for the information of all concerned. In section five, liability of the employer, employer head of office, educational or training institution. So the employer or head office, educational or training institution shall be solidarily liable for damages arising from the acts of sexual harassment committed in the employment, education or training environment if the employer or head of office, educational or training institution is informed of such act by the offended party and no immediate action is take, uh, taken thereon. In section six, independent action for damages, nothing in this act shall preclude the victim of work, education, or training related sexual harassment from instituting a separate and independent action for damages and other affirmative relief. So we are, if we are sexually harassed, we can also sue them or make another move apart from the move of the administration or the the president of your organization. So in section seven penalties, any person who violates the provision of this act shall upon conviction be penalized by imprisonment of not less than one month or more than six months or a fine of not less than 10,000 not nor more than 20,000 pesos or both should uh, such fine and imprisonment at the discretion of the court. Any action arising from the violation of provision acts of this act, provisions of this act shall prescribe in three years. So in section eight, uh, separability clause, if any portion or provision of this act is declared void or unconstitutional, the remaining portions or provisions hereof shall not be affected by such declaration, shall not be affected by such declaration. In section nine, repealing clause, all laws, decrees, orders, rules, and regulations, other issuances are part thereof 
inconsistent with provisions of this act are hereby repealed or modified accordingly. Effectivity clause, this act shall take effect 15 days after complete publication in at least two national newspapers or general circulation. So this act was approved, which is a consolidation of House Bill number 9425 and Senate Bill number 1632, was finally passed by the House of Representatives and Senate on February 8, 1995. So we have here a resolution under this uh, RA, under the sexual harassment, also related to sexual harassment. The resolution number 94-2854, it is uh, the sexual harassment in the workplace. So it is a memorandum, uh, memorandum circular number series of 1994. The subject is policy on sexual harassment in the workplace. Whereas the state values the dignity of every human person and guarantees full respect to human rights. Whereas sexual harassment is recognized as a violation of human rights, morale, and efficiency in the workplace, violates the merits and fitness principle in the civil service and creates a hostile environment in the workplace, which adversely affects productive performance. Whereas Section 4 of Republic Act 6713 provides for norms of personal conduct which every public official and employee must observe in, all, in the discharge and execution of all duties that they shall act without discrimination against anyone and shall at all times respect the rights of others and refrain from doing acts contrary to law, good morals, good customs, public policy, public order, public safety, and public interest. Where uh, Section 1, Chapter 1, Title, uh, a book, uh, 5 of the Administrative Code of 1987, and Section 4, uh, B, Appendix B of Republic Act 6713, empower the Civil Service Commission to adopt positive measurements uh, measures to promote moral and efficiency and observance of the standards of personal conduct, among others, in the civil service. Now, therefore, the Commission hereby resolves to promulgate this policy on sexual harassment in the workplace. So, this made uh, this, all of this um, issues made the uh, policy on sexual harassment possible in the workplace, be implemented in the workplace. So in Section 1, on uh, policy and sexual harassment in the workplace, policy is stated and objective. It is the policy of the state to afford protection to working women and ensure equal work opportunity for all, as well as full respect for human rights. Towards this end, the Civil Service Commission commits to provide a work environment supportive of productivity wherein all officials and employees are treated with dignity and respect and will not tolerate any sexual harassment, whether engaged in by fellow employees, supervisors, associates, or clients. Sexual harassment by another employee or officer constitutes a ground for administrative disciplinary action under the offense of grave misconduct. Conduct prejudicial to the best and interest of the service of simple misconduction provided in the section 46, chapter 6, title 1, book 5 of the Administrative Code of 1987 and subject to penalties up to dismissal from the service. In section 3 with the definition, sexual harassment is one or a series of incidents involving unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, or other verbal or physical conduct of sexual nature may directly and indirectly imply when. Number one, such conduct might probably be expected to cause insecurity, discomfort, offense, or humiliation to another person or group. Second, submission, uh, submission to such conduct is made either implicitly or explicitly 
a condition of employment, or any opportunity for training or grant of scholarship, or submission to or rejection of such conduct is used as a basis for any employment position, including but not limited to matters of promotion, raise in salary, job security, and benefits to affecting the employees, or such conduct has the purpose or the effect of interfering with a person's work performance or creating an intimidating, hostile, or offensive work environment. And letter B, for this purpose, employment really, uh, related to sexual harassment means sexual harassment by a member or employee of the agency which occurs in a working environment or anywhere else as a result of employ uh, employment responsibilities or employment relationship. It includes but not limited to sexual harassment at the office, outside the office, at office related social functions, in the course of work assignments outside the office, at work related conferences or training sessions, during work related travel over the telephone. You can also, you can also do that. So in section four, responsibilities of head of agency. The head of the agency is responsible for number one, informing officials and employees of this policy on sexual harassment, including their rights and responsibilities, and the existence of procedures available under this policy. Second, investigating every formal written complaint of sexual harassment and imposing strict disciplinary measures when a complaint of uh, employment related sexual harassment is found to have been substantiated, substantiated regardless of the position and status of the offender. Doing all in its powers to, power to provide advice, support, and assistance to employees of the agency and applicants who are subjected to sexual harassment, whether one or both parties involved are employed within the same agency. So appointing advisors and providing the training and resources for them to fulfill their responsibilities and their policies. Fifth, designating an officer of the agency who will be responsible for the investigation and hearing of complaints and sexual harassment. So strictly maintaining confidentiality in all stages of the proceedings to protect the interests of the complainant and the person complained against and any other person who may report cases of sexual harassment. And number seven, maintaining records as required by the policy. In section five procedures in this position of sexual harassment cases, all complaints of sexual harassment shall be investigated and disposed of in accordance with existing rules and procedures and administrative proceedings, whereof the commission results as it hereby resolves to approve this policy on sexual harassment. We are hereby enjoined to adopt and implement this policy upon its effectivity. So this memorandum circular, uh, circular takes effect 15 days after publication in newspaper of general circulation. So the chairman at that point in time is Patricia Santorino. So also involving sexual harassment, we have the resolution number 95-6161. So it is a resolution number wherein the state values the dignity of every human being and guarantees full respect for human rights. Whereas an act of sexual harassment is recognized as a violation of human rights, defeats and impairs moral and efficiency in the workplace, violates the merit and fitness uh, principle in the civil service and creates or fosters a hostile environment in a workplace which adversely affects productive performance. Whereas Republic Act 7877, an act declaring sexual harassment and local in the employment, education, or training environment of for other purposes was enacted on February 14, 1995, and became effective on March 1995, 15 days after its publication in the Malayan Times Journal in February 18, 1995. Whereas the Section 4, Republic Act 7877, mandates each employer or head of agency 
to promulgate the proper rules and regulations and consultation with and jointly approved by the employees through their duly designated representatives to include guidelines on proper decorum and to create a committee on decorum and investigation. Now, therefore, this commission hereby promulgates these rules and regulations prescribing procedures for the resolution, settlement, or prosecution and adjudication of sexual harassment cases, as well as guidelines for the proper decorum of officials and employees in a commission which shall be supplementary to these rules under should be under separate covers cover so rule one under this resolution is the coverage section one this rule shall apply to all officials and employees in the commission including the career executive service board or cesb regional and field offices whether in the career or non-career service and holding positions under permanent or temporary status in rule two jurisdiction section two jurisdiction the commission as the disciplining authority over all its officials and employees shall ex uh, exercise exclusive jurisdiction over acts and omissions which constitute sexual harassment the decision of the commission shall be final and appealable only to the court of appeals Rule three, definition of sexual harassment. Section three, sexual harassment is a form of misconduct involving an act or a series of unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, or other verbal or physical behavior of a sexual nature, made directly and indirectly, or implied under the following instances. Letter A, such behavior might reasonably be expected to cause discrimination insecurity, discomfort, offense, or humiliation to another person or group. Second, submission to such conduct is made either implicitly or explicitly a condition of employment. Third, submission to or rejection of such conduct is used as a basis for any employment decision, including but not limited to matters of promotion, raise in salary, job security, and benefits affecting the employee, or such behavior has the purpose or the effect of interfering with person's work performance or creating an intimidating, hostile, or offensive work environment. Rule 4, specific acts constitu uh, constituting sexual harassment. Sex Section 4, the following acts constitute employment or work-related sexual harassment. Demand, requests, or require for sexual favors made for the following considerations. Number one, as a condition for hiring employment, re-employment or continued employment of an individual. Second, in granting said individual favorable compensation, terms or conditions of employment, promotion, or privileges. Under uh, second one is the demand. The demand request or requirement for sexual favor is made against one whose training is entrusted to the offender. The refusal of the demand, request, or requirement for sexual favor will limit, classify, or segregate, segregate an employee as we discriminate, def, uh, deprive, or diminish employment opportunities or other adverse effects said employee. The demand, request, or requirement for sexual favor would result in intimidating, hostile, or offensive environment for the employee. For this purpose, rape or employment-related sexual harassment may take place in the following, the office anywhere else as a result of work responsibilities or employment relations, at office-related social functions while an official business outside the office or during work-related travel at official conferences, fora, composure, training session, over telephone, cellular phone, fax machine, or email. Rule five, forms of sexual harassment. Section five, the act of sexual harassment may take any of the forms. Physical, physical contact or malicious touching, overt sexual advances, unwelcome, improper, or any unnecessary gesture of sexual nature, of a sexual nature, any other suggestive ex 
expression of a new incineration. Apart from physical, we also have verbal, such as or demands for sexual favors or lewd remarks. Third, use of object pictures or letters or written notes with bold, persuasive sexual underpinnings and which create a hostile, offensive, or intimidating rig or training environment which is annoying or disgusting to the victim. Rule 6, persons liable for sexual harassment. Section 6, any official having authority, influence, or moral ascendancy over another person in the commission or employee regardless of sex are liable for sexual harassment in the commission. Any official or employee in the commission regardless of sexual similarly be held liable for sexual harassment under the following circumstances. Number one, directing or inducing another to commit any of the acts of sexual harassment defined in this rules. Principle by induction or cooperating in the commission of sexual harassment by another, uh, another without which it would not have been committed. Principle by indispensable cooperation. So those are the right legal terms for this act. Rule 7, uh, the duty of the commission. In section 7, the commission shall initiate measures to prevent or deter the commission of acts of sexual harassment through an extensive awareness campaign or informal education research and survey of data to determine extent of the problem. The profile of harassers and their victims and the forms of sexual harassment state and its consequences. Second, implement the procedures for the resolution, settlement, or prosecution of acts of sexual harassment provided in this rules. Third, create a committee on the quorum and investigation of cases in sexual harassment and furnish a copy of these rules and regulations to each of the officer or employee in the commission and post copy thereof in two conspicuous locations in places of work or training. In Rule 8, Committee on the Quorum and Investigation in Sexual Harassment Cases, Section 8, a Committee on the Quorum and Investigation shall, shall be created in the Commission and each regional office, including the Career Executive Service Board, CESB, said committee shall perform uh, said committee shall perform the following. Receive the complaint, file the formal charge, and investigate and conduct hearings in accordance with the uniform rules of, of procedure in the conduct of administrative investigation in the Civil Service Commission. It shall submit a report of its findings with the corresponding recommendation to, this, uh, to the Commission for Final Session. Said report shall be considered strictly confidential. Second, conduct meetings with officers, employees, and trainees to increase understanding and prevent incidents of sexual harassment and recommend measures to the commission that will expedite the investigation and adjudication of sexual harassment cases. In the regional office, the authority to investigate and hear sexual harassment cases shall devolve upon the local committee which shall submit the report of investigation with its findings and recommendation directly to the commission. When a member of the committee is complaining and responding in a sexual harassment case, the member shall inhibit himself or herself from the lib uh, deliberations of the committee. In section 9, the composition, the committee on the quorum and investigation shall be composed of the following. First, we have the Central Committee. The Central Committee is also composed of chairman, a director appointed by the commission for a term of one year, the CSC focal point on women and uh, development, the president CSC employee association, or in the absence thereof, a representative elected by the General Assembly, an employee in the second level, an employee in the first level, local committee, the regional director is the chairman, Equality advocate in the regional office also is a one, a representative of the employee association, an employee in the second level, an employee in the first level. The representatives of the first and second level employees in the personal selection board of this commission who have been elected in the general assembly 
all the employees shall concurrently sit as members of the committee on the quorum and investigation. Rule nine, procedures in the disposition of sexual harassment. In section 10, all complaints for sexual harassment must be under oath and supported by the affidavit of the offended party. Any complaint shall in be investigated and disposed in accordance with the uniform rules of procedures in the conduct of administrative investigations in the Civil Service Commission. No action shall be taken on an anonymous complaint, nor shall any civil servant be required to answer a committee on said anonymous complaint. Section 11, action and a complaint upon, uh, upon receipt of complaint, which is sufficient in the form and substance, the head of office shall within five days transmit the same to the committee and the quorum and investigation. The committee and the quorum, both central and local, shall have authority to file the formal charge. The committee for this purpose will designate a hearing officer from, uh, uh, from among themselves. In section 12, the pre uh, preliminary investigation, a preliminary investigation shall be conducted by the committee wherein the complainant and the respondent shall submit their affidavits and counter affidavits, as well as those of the leader, uh, witnesses. Failure of the respondent to submit his counter affidavit shall be construed as a waiver. During the inquiry or proceedings, the parties and their witnesses shall be asked to affirm their signature and said documents and the uh, truthfulness of the statements contained therein. Under no circumstances shall cross-examination of the witnesses be allowed, but the hearing officer may be profound clarificatory questions. In section 13, failure to affirm signature and contents of affidavit, failure of the parties or witness to affirm their signature in their affidavit and contents thereof during the preliminary investigations shall render such affidavit without evidentiary value. In section 14, record of proceedings during the preliminary investigation, the hearing officer shall record in his own handwriting his clarificatory question to the parties and their witnesses any answers given thereto. Such record and other notes may be the hearing officer shall form part of the records of the case. In section 15, duration of investigation, the preliminary investigation shall commence not later than five days from receipt of the complaint by the central or local committee and shall be terminated not later than 10 days after. So in section 16, investigation report within five days from the termination of prelimin uh, preliminary investigation, the investigating officer shall submit the report of investigation and the complete records of the proceedings to the committee and the quorum for appropriate action. In section 17, formal charge. When the committee finds the existence of a prima facie case, the respondent shall be formally charged. The respondent shall be furnished copies of the complaint, sworn statements, and other documents submitted by the complainant unless the respondent shall be given at least 20, uh, 72 hours from receipt of said formal charge to submit the answer under oath together with affidavits of a witness and other evidence. The respondent shall also be informed the right to assistance of the counsel of his or her choice. If the respondent has already submitted the, com the comments and counter affidavits during the preliminary investigation, the respondent shall be given opportunity to submit additional evidence. In section 18, conduct a formal investigation. A formal investigation shall be held after the respondent has filed the answer or after the period for filing an answer has expired. It shall be completed within 30 days from the date of the service of the formal charge unless the period is extended by the commission in meritorious cases. All the respondents did not elect a formal investigation. One shall nevertheless be conducted if upon evaluation of the complaint, the answer, the answer and the documents in support thereof, the merits of the case cannot be, cannot be judicially resolved without conducting such a formal investigation. 
In section 9, failure to file an answer. If respondents fail or refuse to file the answer, respondents shall be considered to have waived the right to file an answer to the charge and formal investigation may already commence. In section 20, content was hearing until terminated, postponement hearing shall be conducted on the hearing dates set by the hearing officer as agreed upon during the pre-hearing conference. Postponement shall not be allowed except in meritorious cases, provided that a party shall not be granted more than two postponements. The parties, their counsels and witnesses, if any, shall be given a notice at five days before the first scheduled hearing specifying the time, date, and place of the said hearing and subsequent hearings. Thereafter, the schedule of hearings previously shall set be strictly followed without further notice. If the respondents fail or refuse to appear during the scheduled hearing, the investigation shall proceed ex parte, and this, uh, and this respondent is seen to have waived the right to present and to submit evidence in his or her favor during those hearings. In Rule 10, Administrative Liabilities, Section 21, any person who is found guilty of sexual harassment shall, after investigation, be meted the penalty corresponding to the gravity and seriousness of the offense. In Section 2, the penalties for light, less grave, and grave offenses are as follows. For light offenses, number one, reprimand of fine or suspension not exceeding 10 days, or fine or suspension not exceeding 20 days, or fine or suspension not exceeding 30 days at the discretion of the uh, disciplining authority. For less grade offenses, transfer a demotion in rank or salary of one grade or fine or suspension not, ex not exceeding six months. Or second, fine not exceeding four months or suspension not exceeding eight months at the discretion of disciplining authority. For grave offenses, transfer or demotion, demotion in rank or salary from two or two to three grades or fine in an amount equivalent to six months salary or suspension for one year. Dismissal, also dismissal at the discretion of the disciplining authority. In section 23, the head of the office who fails to act on any complaint properly filed for sexual harassment after being informed thereof against any employee in the office shall be charged with the lack of duty. In Rule 11, prescriptive period, Section 24, any complaint or action arising from the violation of this rule should be filed within three, day, uh, three years from the commission of such violation. Otherwise, the same shall be deemed to have prescribed. In Rule 12, effect on other issues, Section 25, Memorandum Circular Number 19, Series 1994 of this commission shall be supplementary to these rules in so far as it is inconsistent herewith. In Rule 13, Repealing Clause, Section 26, Rules and Regulations, other issuances or parts thereof inconsistent with the provisions of this rule are hereby repealed or modified accordingly. In Rule 14, Amendment, Section 27, the Civil Service Commission may amend or modify these rules as may be necessary. In Rule 15, Effectivity Clause, Section 28, these rules and regulations shall take effect upon immediately upon approval by the Commission, taken in October 10, 1995. So, again, um, there's, I would like to have a focus on the classification of sexual harassment into grave, less grave or light offenses. In consonance with the definition of Section 3, Rule 3, Section 4, Rule 4, and Section 5, Rule 5 of the Rules and Regulations of this Commission, implementing Republic Act 7877, an act declaring sexual harassment unlawful in the employment, education, or training environment, and for other purposes, I propose that the following acts of sexual harassment be classified in three categories, namely grave, 
or serious less grave and light offenses to be. So this was, uh, these are the offenses, the grave offenses. Number one, un unwanted touching of private parts of the body or any other act of malicious touching. Larb sexual assault. There is C, any act of sexual harassment mentioned in section five and uh, A and B, rule five of the CSC implementing rules and regulations committed by a superior officer or any, uh, any person having moral and ascendancy over the victim. The last grave offenses may include, but not limited to, requesting for dates for public places or sexual favors in exchange for employment, promotion, local or foreign travels, favorable working uh, conditions, or assignments or grant of benefits, pinching, not falling under grave offenses, Unnecessary touching or brushing against a victim's body, derogatory or degrading remarks on in when this directed towards a member of one sex or on one sexual orientation or use to prescribe a person, verbal, uh, verbal abuse or threats. The following may be considered light offenses, persistently telling sexist muddy jokes, causing embarrassment or offense told or carried out after the joker has been advised that they are offensive or embarrassing or as by nature clearly embarrassing offensive or vulgar leering or ogling which is unwelcome suggestive flirtatious knowing or malicious look at one another voyeurism, uh, voyeurism which is sexual stimulation derived through visual means voyeurism the play uh, the display of sexual Sexually offensive pictures, materials, or graffiti. Unwelcome inquiries or comments about the person's sexual, uh, sex life. Unwelcome sexual flir uh, flirtation, advances, or propositions. Making offensive hand or body gestures of em an employee. Or persistent unwanted contact or attention after the end of a romantic relationship. The above classification will greatly facilitate imposition of the proper penalty depending on the gravity and seriousness of the act of sexual harassment. So we still have another one here. The administrative order number 68 and amending administrative number 80 on policy against sexual harassment, whereas administrative Administrative Order Number 80, Series 1991, besides defining and laying down the policy of the Department of Labor and Employment against sexual harassment, also attempts to lay down mechanisms that would help deter such acts or ensure protection of victims of such acts committed by or against employees or officials of the department, whereas some of the provisions of said order need to be further strengthened and clarified. Whereas the department recognized the need to come up with more concrete measures to ensure and effectuate protection of victims against sexual harassment, such as offenses violates the principle of merit and fitness in the civil service, undermines the integrity of the workplace, creates a hostile working atmosphere, and adversely affect workers' performance and productivity. Therefore, in the light of foregoing, administrative number 80, series of 1991, is hereby amended as follows. Sex, uh, section 1, Declaration of Policy, in furtherance of the constitutional provision relative to the public office and human rights, as well as the protection of workers and equality of employment, of uh, opportunities for all, the Department of Labor and Employment shall not tolerate sexual harassment committed by um, Department of Labor and Employment Official Office applicants for employment or any person transacting official business with DOLE. It shall take disciplinary measures against official or employee, whether permanent, casual, or contractual, who subject any fellow official or employee applicants for employment or client to sexual harassment. What constitutes, in section two, what constitutes sex, uh, sexual harassment? Any unwanted or unwanted sexual demand for sexual favor. Number one, committed to take advantage of a weakness, vulnerability, 
status and professional, social, and economic standing of the official employee or client. Second, explicitly or implicitly imposes a condition for uh, securing employment, advancement, promotion, or preferential trade uh, treatment. Adversely interfering with the official employee's performance or bound to create a hostile, offensive, intimidating, or uncomfortable work environment. Sexual harassment constitutes a disgraceful and immoral act which is classified and penalized as a grave offense under the grounds for disciplinary action of the Dole Manual on Disposition of Administrative Cases. Such classification and its corresponding penalty shall be adopted by this order without prejudice to the filing of other cases involving the same act with regular courts. In Section 3, Fact-Finding Committee or Creation and Composition. So there's a Fact-Finding Committee. A special Fact-Finding Committee is whereby created to receive and investigate or hear sexual harassment complaints and submit reports recommendation to the secretary. The committee shall be composed of the following dollar res, uh, resident and groups person who is who will be the chairperson, the chairperson dollar Philippine uh, development plan for women and focal point. We have the co-chairperson and the co-chairperson. And then we have assistant secretary for management services that could be a member, director, human director, human resource. Development service, a member, and director, legal uh, service, could be a member, also a member. And then we have resident, DOLE, or its concerned agency, employees union, that's for the ad hoc member. And then we also have resident ombudsman, uh, ombudsperson of the agency concerned, so also a member, ad hoc member. So any member of the committee who complains or of its complaint against any act of sexual harassment shall inhibit himself from participating in the deliberation of the committee. Section 4, Secretariat, the legal shall act as the secretary of the fact-finding committee. In Section 5, procedure in the disposition, disposition of sexual harassment cases, the secretary shall promulgate rules and regulations implementing this administrative order. In Section 6, awareness, raising campaign, information, dissemination, so all concerned agencies shall undertake information of dissemination campaigns to raise awareness on a policy against sexual harassment and to prevent incidents of the same. This order shall take effect immediately. Sign Nieves, our confessor, the acting secretary. So it was in March 25, 1992. I, uh, this one is uploaded in my YouTube channel. So again, uh watch that one so that you can still remember and instill or try to get and absorb all those uh rules and policies on sexual harassment so that you could also protect yourself and protect other people for this matter. thank you very much magandang umaga magandang hapon po ulit at maraming maraming salamat sa pakikinig happy saturday